Now to a story of corporate bribery and corruption. A UK fraud investigation covering five African countries has ordered the UK arm of Swiss commodities firm Glencore to pay more than $300 million in penalties for bribing officials in exchange for oil contracts in Africa. The court found that executives from the company carried millions in cash by private jet to get favourable deals in Nigeria, Cameroon, in Ivory Coast, Equatorial Guinea and in South Sudan. It's the first time in the UK that a company has been found guilty of authorising corruption rather than simply turning a blind eye to it. Akere Muna is a Cameroonian anti-corruption lawyer former Vice President of Transparency International and a member of the African Union High-Level Panel on Illicit Financial Flows from Africa. Will this fine, I asked him, act as a deterrent to future corruption? From what I'm hearing, the, the full fine and the, uh, that, 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 that has been levied, you know, doesn't even uh, reach the amount of profits that Glencore makes in a week. So uh, as an African, you know... Uh, who has been in this area for the past 20-odd years, I, it's a bit saddening because uh, it is, uh, I mean, in, in terms of the UK and the US, it's a simple violation of the law. And while in terms of Africa, we the victims, we don't get a dime about, out of it. And, and the fact that uh, our countries are not doing anything about it is even more saddening. These are uh, convictions in, involving five countries. How widespread is this sort of illegal activity, do you think? I think it, it, is, it is. I mean, as the judge said in court today, you know, it, to, to, it was part of Glencore's culture. And one can therefore guess that Glencore, which is one of the biggest commodity traders, that was his modus vivendi, and that's how he made his money. And to be the kind of wealth the company is today, and the extractive industry, you know, it's uh, is known to be uh, the the real uh, home for the the biggest corrupt practices. I mean, that is why the EITI initiative, which was promoted by uh, TI and actually brought into force, I think, by Tony Blair, is uh, is very important from the point of view that uh, it causes tries to bring transparency into this. But you know. It is the, 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 the nature of the trade makes it very, very amenable to uh, corrupt practices. And, you know, I think it'll, it'll take two to tango. I mean, for example, in the present case of Glencore, it would have been very helpful if the British and American authorities would tell the countries, you know, the five countries you, 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 you mentioned, who are those they paid? Because now the guys say they paid. The next question is, who did you pay? And that, to me, will take all of two minutes. I mean, in, in Cameroon, Glencore is still operational. Someone should call them and say, man, who did you pay? And, and Why that, won't that they release those details? That can only promote. Well, that's the question. Now, that's the question. It, beats, it really beats me because uh, we go on and on in those speeches and, and, and uh, global north countries talk about corruption in the south and all that. And there they are, America and the UK, with names of people who took bribes. And they're not published. That's sad, isn't it? There are quite crude operations involved, really. I mean, the bribes were barely disguised. They were called in contracts things like signing fees and success bonuses. They they barely covered their tracks. Yeah, in some cases they called them magazines and stuff like that, you know, and flying around it, flying around with the cash in in private jets. I mean, it sounds like some kind of uh, drug cartel in Latin America. It's crazy. I mean, you know. Uh, uh, but you know, I think the 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 I mean, naming and shaming is the old trick that does it. You okay. know, uh, once your name is out there, uh, it, it's helpful. That was Ekere Muna, a Cameroonian anti-corruption lawyer and former vice president of Transparency International.